Good morning. Welcome to Mornings with the Mayor. And goodness sakes, do we have a great guest this morning to talk about education, number one. We all know how important that is, and you all know how important it is to me. Uh, we have Dr. Jim Lynch from the uh, Community College. Uh, Dr. Lynch has been there since 1992. So uh, that in itself is a lifetime. Uh -huh. uh, but we hear he's going to retire. We'll let him say that if he says it. If, if not, then we'll know it's not a rumor. <laughs> but anyhow, Dr. Lynch, welcome to our show today. And uh, we're here and certainly thank you for coming well, and pleasure. give us all the information about there. Thank I you. guess maybe we start out a little bit of back background. And I mean, uh, I know you could spend two hours on that, but I know you've uh, been in many community colleges, uh, not just here in Bucks, but around. And uh, just give us a little bit of background, then we'll get into ours. Okay, well, it was, it's really, I fell into this job really totally by accident. I had no idea what a community college was, but I went to graduate school in New York and uh, met up with a bunch of people who were starting the community college movement uh, back 45 uh, years mm. ago. It's been a while now. And uh, just got intrigued by the whole notion of a community college, what it means for a community, and the different kinds of things that community colleges are able to do. I, I got excited by it uh, 45 years ago, and I'm still excited every morning when I come to work here at Bucks. Well, and, and 45 years is a long time. And community colleges weren't that uh, well known 25, 30 years ago. Uh, when did Bucks come? When, when did we start our? Uh, Bucks started in 1964. 64. That's as soon as you could start in Pennsylvania. That's when the legislation was passed to allow community colleges in Pennsylvania, and Bucks uh, cranked right up uh, just after yeah. the legislation. And I can't tell you how many students from Ben Salem uh, go to the community college. Actually, the gentleman on the other end of this camera uh, is a graduate of there that uh, that's doing all our work here that we hired here at the township, Darren, and he's a great young man and does a great job. But there's so many different aspects of what you can take at the community college. Tell us about some of the things that I know you were instrumental in and of bringing to the college. Well, I think the foundation that was there long before I started, thankfully, and lots of good things continue to happen. Our commitment to the liberal arts and sciences, 70% of our students still transfer. Keeping those strong is really important to us. 30% uh, of our students are probably taking uh, courses that direct the job entry. Most people in uh, Bucks County who have gone to a hospital for one reason or another has run into a nurse. 50% uh, of the nurses in Bucks County hospitals came out of Bucks County Community College. Now we've got licensed practical nursing and radiography and a number of other medical specialties like phlebotomy and uh, health information technologies. Those things are all emerging at this particular point. Uh, they're exciting fields for us to be in, uh, things that we weren't in before. And so that's very exciting itself. Another piece of uh, Bucks that has grown rapidly during my tenure at the college is really our continuing education offering. So we've always had a little bit of focus on, but we've really ramped up our focus on business and industry training, workforce development, as we call it now, mm -hmm. working with the, the WIBs and other uh, employers in Bucks County. Uh, for example, we're now the training partner with uh, Gamesa, our wind energy partner here in Bucks County. And we're always looking for ways in which to continuously work with the citizens uh, in the community and the business community mm -hmm. particularly. One of the, I guess, the biggest thing that's really changed in the last 20 years is our very significant commitment to emergency services. And I think many people don't really understand that uh, Bucks now runs the uh, Bucks County Emergency Services Training Center up in the Doylestown mm -hmm. area. Uh, we've been working with the commissioners and the state to build the new Lower Bucks uh, Fire Training Center uh, on the old Roman Haas site, now the Dow Chemical site. We're looking forward to opening that up in about a month, and that's uh, an exciting prospect. But uh, we did probably more than 70,000 registrations last year in emergency services training. And we did them, uh, we, we've been training uh, firefighters, for example, throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We've done some other places in the United States uh, by request. And we have a, a longer term relationship with the Department of Defense in which we're doing training for uh, a variety of defense installations and training uh, mm -hmm. first responders and emergency services people. Uh, and so we, we literally send staff to Korea and Japan and other parts of the world uh, on behalf of that DOD connection. And that's very, very exciting work. Yeah, and I, I've, I've, a few of those meetings we've had up there, emergency management people right. uh, throughout the police and uh, certainly our ambulatory and, and fire and uh, teaching 
as a whole and as us as community leaders would attend to see what's going on. So it is, that, and I think you said 70,000? 70, 70,000, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a bigger enterprise than you think. Wow. Uh, when you think about 70,000 people worldwide that we've touched. Now some of those people are taking multiple classes. Mm -hmm. They're not all 70,000 different individuals, but you do run into a lot of people who have been touched by Bucks uh, statewide, actually. Yeah. Well, Gamesa, it's funny you mentioned them. Uh, their headquarters is now here in Ben Salem. They've moved in uh, for their corporate headquarters here, and, and we're thrilled to death. 400 employees, uh, an office uh, complex here. So we're delighted with them, and we know what they do up there. Yeah, uh, good company. Oh, it's a marvelous company, and certainly for the future, when you think about it, uh, clean energy is something that we're all working towards. And I think that's another one of those new things that's uh, really come on scene. We have our Green Jobs Academy, which we started uh, right there working side by side with Gamesa again at the Bridge Business Center site. Uh, that's been a great uh, operation. We were able to get a grant uh, with a, a variety of uh, folks help to do the Veterans Green Jobs Academy. In fact, I just gave out some certificates to the, some completers of that particular program. It's nice to have the veterans coming back and looking at family sustaining jobs for themselves in terms of where they want to go with their careers now that they're back from Afghanistan, Iran, and other, uh, other wars as well. You know, I, I remember, and I, don't, and I just lost track of it, but I remember the gaming industry wanted to uh, have teaching. We never took that up, did we, at Lower Bucks? Well, I think a little bit of uh, exploration was done to try and find out whether or not we had a niche to effectively serve long term in the gaming industries. Right now, I think we're not as deeply involved uh, when uh, some of the community colleges nationally, both in, in Las Vegas and essentially at the Jersey Shore, were involved early on when there was a big industry growth. Yeah, so there were lots of casinos. Uh, the critical mass is not large enough, really, for us to really generate a good training program yeah. at this point. Although many, uh, many of our students end up in the industry, for example, students in our hospitality programs mm -hmm. end up in the industries because there's so much restaurant work, so much chef need uh, in those programs, uh, management need. You know, it's funny you, you mention that, but I'm on the Pennsylvania mm -hmm. Convention Center board, and I chaired hotel and hospitality for uh, about seven or eight years, and some students from uh, Lower Bucks Community College actually were hired down there in that field. Yep. So it just goes to show you how far this goes. I want to mention something about number one, the board. Uh, you have a, a, a great board and through the years has uh, gone over and done a great job. I was on the foundation board for quite a few years and the job that they do as volunteers there and what they're getting accomplished I think is outstanding. It is, and it's, uh, you know, the, the nice part about community colleges is that it's about the community. So not only do you have community people involved uh, as representatives of the public uh, serving on our board of trustees, but people like yourself who have volunteered to serve on our foundation board to try and raise money, for example, for scholarships. That's something that's really more and more important these days as the cost of higher education has really gone oh. up. And scholarship support that's been raised by the foundation is very significant to many of our students. Yeah, you know, I want to get a little ad in there for myself, if you don't mind, because no. I do have my own scholarship foundation. And uh, some of the students have, that have won have gone to the community college. Uh, and we do that every year. And just to remind everybody, see your counselor at your school. You have to be in Ben Salem, not a Ben Salem school, but you have to be a resident of Ben Salem. Right. And, uh, go through the criteria. I'm not involved in who wins. It's a foundation that picks the, uh, and chooses the winners. But uh, all of these, uh, all of these uh, scholarships, wherever these youngsters can get one, is so important to them. Education is very, very yeah, it's, uh, expensive. It's, it's very important. And other members of our community have stepped up really in big ways yeah. to do that. Uh, the Zlocks recently gave a significant donation on behalf of veteran scholarships. Uh, we had the Harry Fox Scholarship yep. Fund. You were in, I'm uh, instrumental in that. Yeah. That really is for middle class students who otherwise might not qualify exactly for federal financial aid. So there's lots of ways in which to help students accomplish the dreams yeah. they have for themselves. Yeah, I'm going to switch gears for a second. I'm okay. going to bring something up. And you, I'm sure you don't remember this one, but Dr. Lentz is a doodler. I guess you call it a doodler. What do we call yeah, that? Yeah, I'm uh, not sure what it is. <laughs> but anyway, he does all of these, and I'll let Darren uh, pull up on this. But this is from 1996, 
and I went to a fundraiser at the co and bought this, and I keep it out all the time, and people ask me about this. And I said, well, that, uh, Dr. Lynch, uh, president of community college, and uh, he does these. It's a form of art, and it really is. I mean, uh, when I get to look at it, I don't know if you remember this one, Dr. Lynch, but I know you do many of them. Uh, we do many of them. You know, this is kind of the other part of my life. Uh, as an undergraduate, I was an architecture, art and architecture major. And then I took some additional graduate courses in the area of the arts, and that's uh, the area that I taught in uh, around the time that I was uh, an administrator. And actually, uh, I just started doing these because I just like doing them. And they've become something that people look forward to now. <laughs> they they kind of kid me about these crazy doodles that I do <laughs> because they're not just sort of scratches on the paper. Well, this is a real one. It's signed, and it's 1996. Yeah. So you can, uh, quite a few years ago when you did this one. But uh, I couldn't wait to have you on the show and show you that I keep this out and, and tell everybody where it comes from. And a lot of people say, well, how do they do it? I said, you're asking the wrong guy. I said, uh, I might do it on a piece of paper on my desk or nothing. <laughs> this is real art. It really is. Well, it starts to, you know, it starts to be fun. Actually, it helps me think. Uh, oddly enough, I, I really focus well when I'm actually doodling at the same time. So I'm listening intently, but I'm also working. And of course, I'm, I'm doing it a little bit more aggressively artistically than just kind of scratching oh, my gosh, pen on the paper. Yeah, really. But uh, you didn't think I still had that. Or that's I did, great. Uh, yes. And, uh, I actually didn't remember that you bought it at the, at yeah, the auction. Yeah, that's yeah. where I bought it, at the auction. And uh, so it, it, it's pretty neat to, to have that. And I'll leave it out there anyway. But um, I know that's on the lighter side. and. I guess when you have a lot of hard things you're thinking about and everything you're doodling, they probably come out a lot better. You know, well, I think you and I both uh, share the uh, trait, I suppose, of having to go to a lot of meetings. Oh, goodness. And you yeah. do a lot of listening, yeah. uh, a lot of active listening at Absolutely. those meetings as well. So I like to just try and keep myself alert by doing that. And this actually does it for me. If I'm just sort of sitting there kind of zoning out, it's harder to kind of stay focused. Do you but keep them all? I have hundreds of them, yeah, <laughs> I do. I really have hundreds of them. I've given them away, I've yeah. sold them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, I've given well, them to friends. That's outstanding. So you know you've been doing a long time. That's 96 yeah. for now. Right. You're only there four years. Right? That's right, I've been doing we got a long that time. one. Yeah, but it'd be interesting now to compare a 96 one. There you go. Maybe uh, things have changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I know you've been there it's 20 years. Right. And I said at the beginning of the show, I heard a rumor that you're retiring. Uh, is that true? Or? That is true. Yeah, I thought after, you know, you always look for the right time to, to jump in. And even though I don't have much experience in retiring, because my dad um, basically had his uh, business until he was in his 80s. But uh, when you're in a business like ours, you really need to think about the way in which the entire enterprise functions and when it seems right. So right now is a great time, I think, for the college to move on after 20 years. It'd be great to get a new president in. Things are good at the institution. The institution is financially sound. It's got a great board. It's got a great foundation board. Lots of things are going well at the institution. We've made major changes, obviously, in our upper and lower bucks campuses. We've got 2,000 students now taking distance learning classes. We've got this emergency services uh, program starting up again and, and cranking up again and going very well. Uh, so there's lots of good things to happen, and I think I'd rather turn over the reins at a really good time than just wait for the trustees to be saying, isn't he gone yet? <laughs> so, <laughs> Jeff Paternison. Uh, yeah, right? so, well, I don't know. It's just, uh, it just seemed like it was right to me. Okay. Uh, I passed my 70th birthday in 20 oh, years, and I figured, you know, what the heck, it's about time uh, to do something else. But you're going to do something else. You're uh, too active. Inevitably, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, inevitably, you know, lots of people have begun to come uh, as they understand that this change might be in the works. They come to me and say, have you ever thought about doing this? Have you, you know, somebody came to me the other day and said, have you ever thought about being a superintendent of schools or oh, wow. starting yeah. a new school or something else? Yeah. So, you know, I think the fun part will be to listen to some things, think about uh, how I want to spend some time. I guess I'd like to spend a little more time on my bike. I'm, I'm an inevitable uh, road biker, so I'd like to get out there a little bit more, maybe spend a little more time with my grandchildren than I've been able to do that. So I think there'll be some fun things ahead. I'm not exactly sure when the transition will occur. It's when the trustees are ready and have found someone to uh, to move on now. Okay, be, so that might be another couple of years, Dr. <laughs> uh, it might, but uh, I'm expecting that it'll be sometime before Christmas. Well, that's good. And yeah. I, I, gosh, I wish you all the uh, the best. Thank it's you. It's been, been an incredible part here in Bucks County. And uh, 
certainly going to be missed, but uh, things will move on. You, you laid a great foundation. Things, like you said, are very well there. Well, I've had uh, the great pleasure of working with so many really neat people in Bucks County. Um, you know, I were talking before we got on the air that you know, my wife is really from this area. Uh, she grew up here, and even though she's been working in Baltimore for 40 years, uh, she basically grew up uh, in, in uh, Montgomery, Philadelphia, Bucks Counties. We've got, in fact, we were looking for a relative uh, not so long ago buried in, in, in a uh, cemetery here in Bucks County. We, we haven't been able to find him yet, but we'll, we'll keep looking. So we've got a lot of ties here, uh, a lot of friends here. Uh, uh, many members of her family lived in Bucks County, uh, were original Levittowners, and we visited here, and we visited uh, lots of folks over the years. So it's, uh, it's very much a part of our lives. Well, you always be part of Bucks County. Well, thank you. And thank how you. could that not ever happen? But uh, I'll give you a closing thoughts. Anything you want to tell? Maybe a little the urgency of education. How important it is. Uh, well, it is. We're at a very difficult time in education at this particular point. Uh, it's difficult for two or three really big reasons. One is that. Uh, we have a lot of concern about whether or not students are being adequately prepared for college coming out of high school. So that's one of the themes that a lot of people are thinking about and working on and figuring out how can we uh, improve college readiness for many of our students because as a practical matter, 60 to 70 percent of the new jobs uh, in this economy are going to require a college education. More students will be needing to go to college. Uh, and while the community college is ready to do that, we need those students to be ready to have a, a collegiate experience. So, so that's one of the uh, key issues. A second big issue is cost. We talked about that when yeah. we were talking a little bit about scholarships. There is a huge concern now about the rising cost of college, the rapidity with which tuition is rising, not only at the community colleges, but also at the state colleges. You know, Pennsylvania is probably the sixth highest cost state in the nation. Uh, for higher education. So that's a whole other uh, topic, but it, that is uh, something that we're very concerned about. And we're very concerned about the amount of money that families are having to take out of the bank to support a college education or the loans that they're taking out that then will require them to pay that increased amount of money back. So that's another significant issue. A third may be the, the way in which technology is impacting education. Mm -hmm. uh, we not only see it in terms of the technologies that students are using and the social media technologies, but just the cost of technology. Everybody is assuming that you can't go to school anymore in which there's a computer at every desk all of, of the time and your iPads have to be working and your, your internet has to be working and we've made huge investments at the college, uh, millions of dollars, literally, of investments in technology. And there doesn't seem to be any end to that technical investment, which is in turn driving uh, the costs of education. And, and lastly, I think there's a whole issue about the paradigm that we have, the way in which we teach. And essentially, we're not teaching students too terribly differently than the, the way they were taught 20 years ago or even longer when you and I were in school. Uh, we don't know enough about learning theory and how students learn. And, and the productivity paradigm is not changing. Almost every other business in this country has figured out how to do more with less. Uh, if you walk into a college class today, there's the same 20 students and a teacher in that class, and no wonder the costs are going up. So all of these things kind of come together. There's some very exciting, very interesting times, but we'll have to grapple with a number of these problems. Yeah, well, you said something that's really interesting to me, and you mentioned somebody wanted you to be a superintendent. What is there anything that's outstanding in these youngsters in the preparation to go off to the community college or universities that could be done differently in your eyes? Do you see anything there that's uh, to prepare them better? I, I, I'm not sure how that all works anymore, but I know you're right about that. Uh, a lot of these youngsters before they they had to do prep before they even get in. Uh, well, I think uh, uh, what's I think emerging as a good strategy right now is more of a partnership between colleges and high schools, particularly trying to figure out what students' deficiencies are earlier on in their lives, and and so we need to talk some more together. We need to get the superintendents together and the curriculum specialists together at the high schools and the college people, not just Bucks, but all of the college people together, to say, look, here's where we think college readiness means. You need to be ready to do these sets of skills by the time you walk in the door. If you can't do those sets of skills, you're going to have to take 
uh, remedial or, or uh, replacement sure, work yeah. before you get there. And I think by opening that conversation and saying that we share this, this is a K through 16 problem, it's not a K through 12 problem, that, but by attacking the problem together, we'll be able to, I think, better decide how it is to better prepare students. Yeah. Uh, time on task is one. There's no question that uh, American uh, high schools are spending less time in educational tasks than colleges, uh, excuse me, than high schools are in other parts of the, of the world. And uh, if we don't want to lose out, we've got to figure out how to do that. And frankly, unfortunately, it may mean a little less football and a little more math uh, to make that happen. Well, Dr. Lynch, I, uh, again, thank you for uh, your time here in Bucks and the remaining time you're talking you, about sir. Christmas. I heard that. Uh, we'll forever be grateful for what you've done here in Bucks County at the community college. I, for one, uh, uh, commend you on an outstanding 20 years here Thank in you, Bucks County and wish you the best <laughs> in your endeavors in the future. And uh, uh, maybe you can be that conduit you just talked about of uh, superintendents and colleges and people getting together. Sounds like it makes a lot of sense. Well, I think we need to do more. And we're working together is always a better way to do it than trying to figure it out on your own. I agree. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. you. And good Appreciate luck in your endeavors. And uh, to your children, I think you might see your grandchildren a little more. Yep, it would be uh, great. And you can ride your bike with I your grandchildren. Ride my bike. I'm looking forward to that. Good to have you here today. And, Thank uh, you, sir. Look forward to hearing from you. Till next time, everybody. God bless. Who says you can't go home? Who says you can't go home? There's only one place. They call me one of them.